Hello viewers, recently I made a massive and grave error on Gran Turismo 7 by jumping into Daily Race A. It was this, the Maserati MC20 around the famous Red Bull Ring. Starting this first race in 8th and as you can see into Turn 1, pretty much turns into Call of Duty Warzone, more so than a racing game. Then, oh, I don't know what those guys were doing, turning right on a straight, heading immediately into the wall. And so after one corner, I found myself in fifth, which is not too bad of a return, heading up into turn three. Now, the first thing I'm noticing about this car is just how horrific the brakes are. This is a common theme amongst this type of car, very fast road cars, lots of power. And then on this game, it seems as though the brakes don't really want to keep up with the power. And so you kind of go on very straight a lot of the time into the corners. So why is this a mistake? Why was doing Daily Race A a mistake? I, I kind of jumped on for a bit of fun, really. And ultimately ended up ruining my sportsmanship rating. This was a race where driver rating was not to be changed. You could lose... You could finish last and your driver rating would not change at all. But I didn't quite notice that sportsmanship rating did actually change. And so I probably should have taken note of that before jumping in. As you can see, an absolutely horrific and terrible line through the last two corners, which hopefully should be forgotten and never to be seen again, because that was quite awful. Heading up in towards turn one, up behind the Spaniard on the brakes here into turn one. And both of us have gone sailing on very deep indeed having issues with the brakes quite clearly i mean it really is a skill issue on our on our part as a driver more so than the car but um, i'm going to blame the car as uh, it's typical in driver fashion to do into the hairpin and this was uh extremely ugly ugly scenes here at the, at the hairpin with with all matter of things kicking off that was one of the worst dive bombs of all time and I probably should go to prison for that absolutely horrendous stuff then into turn four again way too late on the brakes I'm just not adapting my style I don't know what it is first race of the day for some reason I'm just not cutting it here and dropping down into sixth position after all of that so there's a chance there of gaining a few positions I do manage to gain one back here as we got the inside of the the Russian into the penultimate turn to recover fifth but then I'm up behind my Spanish friend here who I've dive bombed approximately 18 million times in this race already we're going for 18 million and one here doesn't quite need to happen though because he drives wide perhaps in fear I was about to punt him off without pressing the brake pedal but that's me up into fourth position gonna try and survive this next corner and it's always quite a scary proposition to go into a big braking zone with multiple cars behind who could all take you out. Thankfully on this occasion, that does not happen. The Spaniard could have got revenge, but chose not to, thankfully. Setting the fastest lap of the race there before moving into the final moments of the race. Looking for the podium, not quite close enough to make it happen. And so finishing fourth after a somewhat okay recovery into race two once again starting towards the back this time 11th and you can see my driver rating sorry my sportsmanship has gone down to a so that is not good news at all uh, that first race really really killed me and i'm about to get killed here as i tried to go through that car it ghosted out initially and then suddenly when i was one millimeter away it came out of the ghost in typical fashion so here i am down in 12th place with a sportsmanship rating of A for the first time in actually many months. In fact, I can't remember the last time I was on sportsmanship rating A. So this is going to take quite a lot of work to get back. And as you see, once again, it has turned into a war zone or a battlefield, if you like. As everyone turns left, right and centre, anything to go, anything but going around the actual corner. I'd rather go into the wall, it seems. So this is probably the worst place to try to recover your sportsmanship rating. In this type of race, there is such a pedigree of carnage with a fast, powerful car 
with limited braking, uh, braking capabilities, you are simply asking for trouble and for your sportsmanship rating to take a massive tumble. And that's exactly what's happened. I'm having fun though, so there is that. That does um, somewhat offset the negativity that we've experienced so far. But here in P6, getting a penalty for ignoring the track limits just to rub it in. And so my sportsmanship rating is going to take even more of a dive as we go down all the alphabet letters from A down to Z, probably. So here in sixth place, we're still harboring some hopes in this race. In fact, you should continue watching this race. Obviously, that's biased commentary there. Obviously, you should continue watching my video rather than click away, but um, you are in store for a, a bit of a treat on this one. We do have this one second penalty to serve, but we're still going to be on the front foot. We're still going to attack. And hopefully that one second actually doesn't cost us too much time. We've got a bit of a gap to the car behind. Now, oh, actually got a 1.5 second penalty, which is very frustrating. But we're on the inside here. Let's try and hit our brake marker at the beginning of the kerb on the left. Car on the left there. Sailing a little bit too wide. As, oh, kicking the back end round. We're out behind our Spanish friend from the previous race. Is probably quaking in his boots right now at the prospect of Super GT going for a massive lunge. And you bet it, it's going to happen. Because unfortunately, we got the inside. To be fair, I think I did. No, actually, no, I can't be fair about that. That was quite, that was quite diabolical. And on the exit, he does get away. And I think the German there getting left in the gravel. Serving the one and a half second penalty. Thankfully, there was enough of a gap behind such that I didn't really lose a position. As you can see, just in front, the leader is only 2.7 seconds in front with a very close-knit battle for that position. So there's very much a chance here of something positive happening with the Spaniard in front securing himself a 0.5 second penalty here as we head into turn one, lap number three. Three laps to try to get the job done here. Trying to fight for traction on the exit of the corner as we head towards the big braking zone on the circuit. The big uh, move is coming. Look to the inside, force him narrow. We're going to try and perform the old switcheroo here. I know he's got the inside. There it is. Perfection. Crofty in the commentary box goes absolutely wild at the sight there of the old switcheroo. Classic stuff. And that's me up into fourth. Spaniard doesn't quite fancy going for a a mega dive bomb to settle the score here into turn four so i'm going to keep p4 on lap three as we head around chasing p3 looking for this podium now heading down the hill final sector looks like this this group here at the front is just beginning to spread out slightly and so if i want to make my way to first place i need to kind of get a move on getting really good traction here on the exit this car has so much power, you really have to kind of square off the corner and drive off the turn in a nice straight fashion to really utilize the full power of the car and really harness its full potential in acceleration. Dropping down into the final corner, two laps remaining. The Austrian in front on home territory, getting himself a 0.5 second penalty as we set the fastest lap of the race to set down a marker everyone in the lobby just letting them know the super gt is here setting the fastest lap and is making his way through the pack getting a good exit out of turn one that's going to give us a run here towards the big braking zone up the hill trying to break just before the 150 board meeting the apex of the corner back into third gear for better traction on the exit not quite getting getting it as you can see having a bit of a bit of a moment on the way through the turn as we are hunting down first place, we've got a bit of a gap behind. So we've got the security now. Let's not really have to worry too much about defending. Rivs Racing has gone very deep into turn four. And that's going to surrender some time, but not the position for now. Although the, the, the pressure is coming. He's surely feeling it right now. As he knows that I've made the progress from the back of the pack. Let's not forget, we started this race by driving straight into the back of another car and dropping immediately down into last place. 12th out of 12 at the time, someone else has retired. So there's now only 11 in the lobby. But still, fighting through from 12th, 
Big moment there on the kerb, heading into the final two turns of lap four. One and a bit laps remaining. The pressure is building. We've carried some nice speed into that one. How about the final corner? Not easy, this car, to control. So much power, as I've said. In fact, in the early races, I had traction control on. In the first race, I tried it on, and it actually seemed okay. Setting another fastest lap, 37-0. And now we're right on the tail. He's gone very deep. Up the inside, on the exit. I've been good out of turn one throughout the majority of this race so far. And boom, we've done it again. Getting another position on the run towards this big braking zone here. And I'm into the lead of the race. Is he going to send it from a million miles back? Not quite from there. As we maintain the position, only really one big opportunity for this overtake to come. I mean, there's still quite a few corners, but this big braking zone here is always one where an overtake could arise. It's not quite going to happen here. I've gone a little bit deep, but we can just lift off the brake and let the car rotate and accelerate away in third. Two corners remaining in this one. Very easy to get a penalty around the Red Bull ring for track limits. And so we've got this 9 tenth advantage. There's no point in pushing too much. And so we can just run the track limit somewhat close, but nothing too crazy. Coming home for a majestic first place. That was quite a brilliant victory from the back of the pack. They'll be talking about that one for many years to come. What a win. My sportsmanship has gone up, but I'm still A rated. So that's not good. So with my sportsmanship still on A, I felt like, okay, this is time to take it a bit more seriously. I'm going to try and set a better time, start a bit further forward. I set a 36-0 before spinning. Before I notice this technique, look how much time I gain on the ghost by engine braking. So essentially you, sh you shift down gears all the way down to first gear and it slows down the car quite considerably compared to just shifting down to the gear you need. So through these corners you really need third gear, but shift down to first, engine braking comes in, the car slows down way quicker. So getting some comfortable times here in the low 36s, that put me on pole position for race number three. So a very different dynamic here, starting from the front of the pack. Now immediately chopping across as best I can to try to, this, try to run this car narrow. Into turn one, we're both going to make contact. And as a result of that, I'm just going to go, okay, well, I will take to the emergency road on the outside. Now coming under threat from the Spaniard, who wants a piece of first place. So I'm going to go fully defensive here, cover the inside. I want the inside. He can have the outside. Just going to force him to the left-hand side, park it on the apex, and that's a textbook defense into that corner. No assault at turn three, but how about turn four? He's still there. I'm going to keep to the right-hand side to really protect the inside and the right-hand side. Getting all over this apex curb and now using that engine braking technique. The car really stopping so much quicker. And this is something I really should have realized in the first race before I wiped out that Spaniard about 15,000 times. But eventually coming through to, to secure another victory in eight minutes eight with the competition coming around eventually five seconds later. So a victory there with pole position, fastest lap and a clean race, the clean sweep. Mm, I am still A-rated. That's quite annoying, isn't it? It's going to take ages. I oh, know, actually, look, I am S-rated now. So I jumped back in for another one. Hopefully this one would be even cleaner and I can get that S rating all the way back. So it's kind of weird, the, uh, the S rating. Once you're S rating, there's kind of two brackets within S rating. So you still want to uh, maximise... The rating i mean I've, I've, I've explained that really badly anyway second place there kind of gets bundled wide by the spaniard and that immediately opens up this gap and that's just the danger i think of starting further back in the pack from pole position you control the race and you just have less um chance of carnage you have more space to work with and so you can really just escape the collisions a lot easier from that position and that's exactly what happened here just pulling away quite comfortably, winning the race eventually by a very comfortable 7.8 or something seconds.
Okay, rating went up a bit more. We'll get there with that. But now we must unleash the American hero, Mr. Scott Speed. All right, here we go. Tenth on the grid. Top two guys on the grid are actually got very, very good time. So this could be quite tricky. And to make it even more tricky, we had an issue here with my fuel mix. Now, I haven't gone on this account in quite a while. And now that I'm using a different wheel, the controller settings were all wrong and I couldn't change the fuel map. For some reason, it was on setting two. So I was down on power by a small amount. I don't know how much, but this was not an optimal situation. But Scott Speed being the goat that he is, he can work his way around any situation. So you can see me there frantically pressing all the buttons to try to work out how to change the fuel mix, but it just wasn't mapped to anything, so I couldn't do it. So once again, um, the, the corners here turning into a war zone. Uh, the Canadian there going incredibly slowly on the apex. And uh, we're going into the back of him. As um, we head towards turn four, Scott Speed here with a lot of work to do. This is going to happen again. This uh, Canadian front just goes really slow on the apex. Just kind of does, doesn't want to accelerate. So I end up going to the back of him. It's still my fault, technically. But there you go. We, we're going to wait and let him go. Before subsequently lunging him in, into the following corner. And securing ninth place. So with that done, we can now turn our attention to moving very much forward in this pack. It's going to be difficult to get on the podium, I think. Given that start, we've already lost eight seconds to the leader. And the top two set very good qualifying times, so I'm not expecting Scott Speed to work that much magic. I mean, he's good, but he's not that good. Uh, interesting oh, double overtake there. Going through one car and then one car just going very wide. Seemingly distracted. So always good to be over here on the America's account. The racing is very different compared to Europe. And perhaps on that note, I should perhaps make an Asian account and head over and race over there. I haven't actually done that before, even on GT Sport. So that could be quite interesting. Anyway, car in front there getting a poor exit. Going past Canadians for fun here is Mr. Scott Speed. As um, we, we catch up to another one here. Is he, is he going to get a very poor run there? Getting a massive moment of oversteer. So that's an easy, easy overtake up into fifth place. With only potential, I'd say, for a third is, is doable here. It's, it's not out of the question completely. So I find myself behind well-known driver Woofer Duff. What a name that is. Um, very much feared driver in the realm of motorsport. Now suddenly someone i think from second place disconnects from the lobby so this turns into the battle for third when it was the battle for fourth about 10 seconds ago and so we do have a chance here of securing a podium on scott speed's return nice little switcheroo there not quite going to come off as i wasn't quite in the right gear at the right time but we're going to continue and try to overhaul woofer duff into the hairpin not quite doing it there, but we're going to try and get a nice late exit. Turning in a tiny bit later, right on his tail here. Surely feeling the pressure now as we head towards turn four. This this is the corner where I was really kind of perfecting my dive bombs into this one. I was getting it all, all wrong at the beginning. But here, boom, look at that. Nicely done. Parking on the apex. Engine brake into suit. And jobs are good and Trying to catch up with second, quite a bit of an ask given they're three seconds ahead. By the end, they are one second ahead. And so Scott Speed only returned, securing a nice podium, and that was a decent result. P3 in fuel map two. Scott Check does it again. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.